Good morning, everybody. How's everyone this morning? We could all find our places as we have up here. It's a great morning. I'd like to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Thank you very much for all you do. And from Pastor Mark says, we are all in awe of you. Get it? Awe, the series in awe of God. So we are all in awe of mothers. So, okay. Uh, what's that? That was bad, right? It was bad? Well, he told me to do it. So that didn't go over to it. I'm looking for him. I don't even see him. So, all right. So happy Mother's Day. Good morning. Uh, my name's Rick. Welcome to Light and Life Church. It's great to have you here. I uh, want to welcome everybody. If you're your first or second time guest here, we'd like to welcome you especially today. Um, you, we have a free gift bag. If you go out that foyer out there and you go to the right, there's a gift bag on the table there in the right. And um, we have that for you today if you're a first or second time guest. Um, and also, thank you for coming. Seriously, uh, if you're a first-time guest, um, we'd love to have you fill out a connection card that's right there in the back of your seat. And if you fill that connection card out, you can put it in the uh, baskets back there by the handsome pastor sitting back there by one of the baskets. That's what that was last week when he was doing this. I didn't get it. went over my bald head. So... But our handsome pastor sitting back there. Now, so return it. You can fill that out. You can put it back there in the baskets and get it. If not, you can put it on the uh, coffee bar out there. We'll take care of that. We thank you. Uh, next week, you'll get a free coffee and a free snack when you come back. And we know you're going to love it so much today that you will be back. Praise God. Uh, we uh, welcome... Uh, Facebook and YouTube, thank you for uh, coming this morning. Thank you for letting us into your homes. It's uh, wonderful to be able to share with you this morning the love of God, the love of Jesus. Um, we'd love to see you in person sometime. If you could show up sometime, we have so many people that are online that will talk back and forth to the people that we have online and uh, show up here. We can see you in person. And we just want to do that, be able to speak into your lives and get to know you. Um, now, we have a vision here at Light and Life, and that vision is to bring hope, healing, and purpose in Jesus Christ. And saying that, we want you not to just experience a church service this morning. We want you to experience Jesus Christ. And as we were speaking down in 845 Drive, which is a class in the morning downstairs at 845, um, we were talking about the Holy Spirit. This is how we experience Jesus through the Holy Spirit. He said, I'm going to leave, but I'm going to leave you the Holy Spirit. And so we don't shun the Holy Spirit here. We don't just... Go by the Holy Spirit here. We love the Holy Spirit. He's welcome here. He's welcome to move in this place this morning. And so we want to do that through his presence, through his word, through praise and worship, and all the things that God told us to do to draw near to him. We're here to draw near to Jesus, and by doing that, we draw near to each other. And so that is what we want you to experience and to live today. And having said that, I have a few announcements, which is really cool because we're getting right down there where I like to be. <laughs> okay, The ladies' luncheon. Ladies' luncheon will be held this Thursday, Breaking Bread Restaurant at 12 p.m. Come for great food, great God-centered conversation with the ladies. So that's at the Breaking Bread Restaurant at 12 p.m. Is somebody saying anything? Okay. We're good? All right. I did that right. I'm waiting for the mothers to say, wait a minute. Okay. Now, volunteers are needed, and they are needed downstairs, okay? We uh, would love to have a volunteer to be a co-leader downstairs for Children's Church Ministry. If you're interested, um, you can see Betsy or you can see Pastor Mark. Also, we need volunteers for a nursery. Please see Pastor Mark or Jeannie. Um, Jeannie's not here right now, but um, if you're interested in that, please see one of those. We could use volunteers to help with our children. That's our future down there. Also, uh, we're having a life group the 26th, Friday the 26th of May at uh, Amy and Rick Kayser's house. That'd be us, and that'll be held at 7 p.m. 
okay? So Living Life Together is going to be on the 26th of May. So we'd like to thank you all for being here today. And now we're going to move into our tithing part. And yeah, there you go. There you go. We can do that. Oh, my goodness. She's so cute. So's the baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I'm getting a look from my wife, too, so that's all right. <laughs> she is adorable, my goodness. Okay, um, there's a missions tab up here that's tithely, all right, and that's one of the easiest ways that you can give your tithes, okay? We have our baskets here. You can give check. You can give cash. You can also mail. We'll have an um, address for you up there. There's a black lock box by that, uh, yeah, not a handsome look at that. That beautiful looking mother standing back there by the doorway, both of them, I guess. Uh, there's a black lock box back there. So thank you guys very much. Good morning, let's stand. I just want to introduce Quinn. This is our newest grandbaby. Aww. We think she's special. <laughs> so we, you know, we started an intercession this morning and I'm telling you, we, I think all of us that were down there were undone by God's presence. It was just so good and so heavy in the room. But there was a word when we first entered into the Holy of Holies. He said, Angel, I don't think people understand the vastness of how far the east is to the west. He says that he throws our sin as far as the east is to the west, and he doesn't remember it when we repent. But you know, his love is that wide in that deep for us. And so we were just undone by his presence this morning about how much he loves us and all that he provides for us. And there was a lot more that was said, and I'm pretty sure there's a sermon coming out of what he spoke this morning. We kind of all processed out loud because it was just such a good, good presence. And, and Ashlyn is ready for worship back there. She's got her tithes raised up already, ready. So let's do that. We believe as a church that giving back to our king the one who loves us so much is worship. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad that we come into his presence and he worships, you know, and, and we were talking about joy in intercession and about, you know, joy is not an emotion or a feeling. It's something that's already inside of us because it's a fruit of the spirit, but we have to learn how to activate it. And so we were talking about how, where do you feel the most joy? And where I feel the most joy is when I come into his presence and worship in a corporate setting. Because the entire world drifts away. Sometimes I, I, when I worship up here, I'm bumping into people because I forget people are next to me. Because I just love being in his presence and that's where I feel the most joy. So this morning I challenge you to come into his presence and allow the world to just drift away. Because he loves you passionately, and it's in his presence that fullness of joy comes. And so let's worship him, not just in our giving, but in our thoughts. You know, don't be distracted by your phones or the beautiful babies we have in this house. There's a lot of really cute babies in this house today. I mean, Hosanna's baby is just to die for over there. And we just have babies everywhere. <laughs> They're so cute. They're so full of life. Let's be like children this morning and worship our king. So raise your ties up as we enter into his presence. God, we thank you that you are a good father and that you are in this house, God. And we thank you for the reminder of how vast and how deep your love is for us. God, it doesn't matter what we did this morning or what we did yesterday or what we do tomorrow. God, your love for us is great and unending. It's a passionate love, God, that moves mountains to get to us, and we thank you for that this morning. God, I ask that you would just pour out your spirit in this house and that every soul in this room feels the vastness of your love today. An unconditional love, God, that is so good and so great. And so perfect. God, be glorified in our giving. Be glorified in our song. Be glorified in our thoughts and our words. And may we hear you 
and you hear us today. And may we come into the Holy of Holies where all else fades away except your presence. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's worship, guys, with all that we are. Bring those tithes up front if you feel led to and worship and dance with your king. Amen. I'm not. 
I believe
shut the gates, let heaven on in. Come rest on us, come rest on us. Fire and rain, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on in. Come rest on us, come rest on us. Fire and rain, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven You know, I hear this soft cry of the Father's heart this morning and a conviction in my own life. He said, you can tell what a person wants with what they spend their energy on. And so he said, Angel, what do you spend your energy on throughout the week? What are your thoughts throughout the week? Where do your thoughts gravitate to? Is it building up your home? Is it building up your land? Is it building up your checkbook? Or is it building up my kingdom? You know, because we sing this song, hear all we want on Sunday morning, but then he says, on Monday, am I still all you want? On Tuesday, am I still all that you want? Or by Wednesday, have you forgotten what you sang on Sunday and you no longer have thoughts of me being all that you want but of what I can give to you? You know, our prayers say a lot about what we want. You know, I want my kids to love Jesus with all their heart, and I spend a lot of time on that. But do I want God just for that, or do I want him because he's all I want? So there's this call in the house this morning. What is it you truly want? When you look at your checkbook, where do your finances go? When you look at your time, 
Where does your time go? Because if I'm all you want, then your life would show that. Your words would speak it. Your spending would reveal it and reflect it. Come on, he's coming back for a bride that is hungry, that is ready and waiting. Let's be like the wise virgins who had their lamps full. The other, the other five, they were believers, but they were not waiting and they were not ready. What do you want this morning? Is this song a true reflection of your heart? Because this is God's heart for you because he's saying this to you this morning. You're all I want. He said, Angel, you're all I want. I want every part of you. I love every part of you. You're all I want. Am I all that you want? Ask yourself. No condemnation. There's just this cry of a father who says, you're all I want. I created you for me. You're all that I want. Be all that I want by reflecting that same love back to me. No condemnation in this house. Don't go there. That's the enemy. It's a cry of a love and a passion that satisfies. Am I all that you want? Because it's in finding me that you get all you want. Because I will complete you. And I know that sounds cheesy if you've grown up in the 80s. But I am the one that completes you. I'm the one that will sustain you. Am I all that you truly want? Don't just give your father lip service. Don't give him lip service this morning. But give him heart service that says, God, you're all that I want. So can we sing that again, Dusty? And mean it when you sing it. God, make my heart want only you.
Spirit, we just we invite you to this, this church today. And I don't mean the building, I mean into each individual one of our hearts and corporately, Lord. Holy Spirit, I know that you are creative and awesome and you work uniquely in each individual person, but also in each individual church. And so we ask you and we invite you, Holy Spirit, this morning to work in us however you want to work in us. And we do bow our hearts before you and we prepare our hearts for the message this morning. We bind every distraction, every lying spirit. And we fix our eyes on you this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Uh, children's children are dismissed to children's church. Can I get a couple of handheld mics up here, please? Good morning. Buenos días. How are you today? ¿Cómo están? ¿Me escuchan? ¿Me escuchan? 
Sí. Can you sí. hear ah. him? Sí. Bueno, primero que todo, quiero felicitar a las madres. First of all, congratulations, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers in here. Eh, pidiéndole al Señor que cada día pues les dé mucha sabiduría, mucho entendimiento. I just ask the Lord that he would continue to bless you and give you wisdom. Para criar a los hijos. Uh, in order to raise your children Para estar en armonía con el esposo, and to be in harmony with your spouse y que la casa esté feliz y contenta and, siempre. That, and may your house be happy all the time. Aunque siempre a veces queremos solo correr, Even though there are moments when we want to just run away pero decimos, okay, okay. sometimes you just got to center yourself Tengo a little bit. Que hacer mi trabajo de madre y esposa. Put your head down and say, I got to be a mother and a wife. Let's Porque do this. Porque somos madres, esposas. Because we're mothers, we're wives. Somos hermanas. Sisters. Amigas, tías. Friends, y, aunts. Y es un montón de trabajo que hay que hacer. There's a lot of work to do. Entonces somos pi, eh, polifacéticas, hacemos muchas cosas. So we're, we're, uh, we do a lot of stuff. Sí, bueno, antes que todo, bueno, como saben, él va a interpretar por mí. So first of all, as you can see, I will be interpreting for her. Eh, español es mi primera lengua. Yo hablo. Eh, crecí en Panamá. Uh, she grew up in Panama, so for her, her first language is Spanish. Sí, hablo el inglés. Uh, she does speak some English. Pero no perfecto para predicarlo but todavía. But not like preaching English. Un día, un día. Un one, día. she'll get there one day. Un día. Y Alan va a poder descansar. And so in those days, I'll be able to just listen and not have to work the whole time. Ajá. <laughs> Eh, nosotros somos Found Ministries. So we are Found Ministries. Y bueno, Alan es el director. Um, I'm the director. Eh, cubrimos algunos países. Uh, we cover a couple different countries. Eh, donde cubrimos algunos ministerios. Uh, where we work in, we have different ministries. Y tenemos como cuántos diez años en eso, creo. Yeah, we've been doing this for like 10 years. Y bueno, ha sido de bendición. And it's been a big blessing. Eh, Alan me conoció a mí en Panamá. Uh, we met in Panama. Eh, él fue como misionero allá. Uh, I was a missionary there at that time. Y pues él tuvo que alquilar la casa al lado de mi casa. And I just happened to rent the house right next to where she lived. Pero yo era muy penosa. Bueno, voy a hacerle cortito el, el... Yeah, she just wanted to share a little bit of that. She was a very shy person, muy, still is. Yo no hablaba con nadie. She didn't talk to anybody. Yo siempre estaba en mi casa. She was always just at home. Y mi papá me dice, Carmi, llegaron a alquilar la casa, anda rápido y pongo una and cortina en el baño. her dad said, Carmi, there's a bunch of gringos getting here. We need to go clean the house. <laughs> y, y, yo, y yo dije en mi mente, ay, ya la vida. And so she said, oh, come on. Y yo agarré esa cortina. So she grabbed a, a curtain for the bathroom. Y yo entré por esa casa de alquiler. Because just to clarify, the house we were renting, her, da her dad owned the house. Yep. So he they were going to clean it before we moved in. Y yo entré por esa casa y no había nadie. So she went into the house and there was nobody there at the yo, time. Y yo dije, solo voy al baño y con, con esa cortina She's y ya. I'm going to run in, I'm going to put up the shower curtain, I'm going to leave. Y no voy a saludar a nadie porque yo no I'm quiero hablar talk, con nadie. I'm not, not, not going to talk to anybody, I don't like people. Y para ir al baño había que pasar la cocina. So to go into the bathroom you had to go into the kitchen. Y yo voy rapidito y veo con el rabo del ojo para allá. And she went into the, the bathroom and out of the corner of her eye y yo veo un gringo ahí. She saw a beautiful gringo. Y yo dije... <laughs> No, I, I, it, it's, true, it's true, it's true, it's true, it's <laughs> true. See? Yo lo vi así, yo dije, qué bonito. Yeah, she, she saw me out of the corner and she's like, oh, he's beautiful. Pero yo no voy a hablar con él. <laughs> but she immediately turned and ran away. Y yo puse esa cortina y yo me fui para she mi casa. She put up the curtain and just left. Ay, pero mi papá es tan como in intenso. But her dad is super intense. Entonces él quería que yo fuera amiga de él. So he wanted her to be my friend. Y yo le dije, como yo voy a hablar con él, yo no hablo inglés. <laughs> And so her dad was like, you got to go be friends with him. So she had a little Spanish-English dictionary. And she didn't speak a word of English. I didn't want to speak a word of Spanish. So she said, this is the only way we're going to be able to talk to each other. And so her dad had this awesome idea. She said, uh, he said, Carmi, on Monday, which was the next day, why don't you go take that guy, walk around and show the town. ¿Dónde está el banco, la panadería, Show them where the bank is, the bakery, the pizza como, place. Ay, papá, ¿por qué? And she was like, Dad, come on. Ay, no va a hacer nada. Él es bien buena gente. And the dad was like, he's a good guy. Claro, he'll be, he'll mi papá fine. tampoco habla inglés. And her dad also speaks no English. Entonces cada vez que hablaba con Alan, Alan era, era como. So he would come over and just talk to me, and I wouldn't understand a word he was saying. <laughs> Era muy difícil. It, it was difficult. Y bueno, yo salí con Ana como muy so, obediente. So being an obedient daughter, she took me to show me around the town. Yo fui con el diccionario, íbamos hablando. And we had a little, that Spanish English dictionary, and we just passed it back and forth. Y yo forth. le decía, panadería. And so she would look up the word like bakery, and she'd teach me that word. Y yo le enseñaba y todo and eso. And then we would go to the bakery. 
Y así fue nuestra relación con un and diccionario. That's how the first few months of our relationship went. So friendship, it wasn't. Ya was tenemos dictionary back and forth. Tenemos 16, 17 años casados. And now recién. we've been married for 17 years. Y pues nos ha ido muy bien. Yeah, so it worked out. Eh, sí. No sé por qué les contesto. I don't know why I shared that. <laughs> Pero sí, este, hoy me toca predicar. So today I'm going to be preaching. Y este, un día estábamos aquí, hace como tres domingos creo estábamos uh, aquí. Like three Sundays ago. Y ese día estaban orando por los enfermos. Uh, we were praying, I was praying for some people who were sick. Bueno, estaba, había una línea ahí que iba a sentarse. There was like a line at the, the healing chair. Y yo estaba ya en mi silla orando, orando. And so I was in my chair and I was praying and praying for the people. Y yo escuché la palabra familia. And I heard the word family. Y yo dije, qué raro la palabra familia. And I thought that's kind of a weird word to just pop into my head, the word family. Y yo dije, yo no voy a pasar allá adelante y decir que recibí la palabra familia, eso no tiene sentido, están orando por los enfermos. Because I was praying, because I was praying for people who were sick, I was thinking I'm not going to get up and just go say the word family to the person in the chair. O sea, no era el momento para decir. It was just it wasn't the right moment for it. Luego al siguiente día está so, hablando con Angel. The next day I was talking to Angel. Y le dije, "Oye, Angel, mira que me pasó esto el domingo." Y ella me miró fijamente y yo le dije, "Recibí la palabra familia." And I said, "Angel, I was sitting in a chair and this is what happened. I was sitting there and I heard the word family." Y ella solo me dijo, "Tienes que predicarlo." And she said, "All right, well, you need to preach about that then." Y yo le dije, "Ah." And I said, "What?" <laughs> I said, "What?" Me dijo, "¿Tú estás segura?" Are you sure? Y se lo repetí tres veces. And so I I said to her three times like, "Are you sure you want me to do this?" Y ella dice, "Sí, tienes She's, que hablarlo, tienes que predicarlo." She said, "Yes, you need to preach about it." Y ella se lo contó al pastor. And so she told Pastor Mark. Y el pastor dice el 14 de mayo, día de la madre. And Pastor Mark said, "All right, you're preaching Mother's Day." Yo, okay, está bien, el día de la I madre. Said, All right, okay. fine, Mother's Day. Okay, el tema de hoy es la familia. So today we're talking about family. Y fue muy interesante cómo yo recibí esta palabra. And it was really interesting how I received this word. Porque a veces nosotros decimos, okay, la familia, mamá, papá, hijos. Because sometimes we think family and we just think like mom, dad, kids. Son perfectos. That's they're all perfect. Pero no, a veces en las familias hay quebrantamiento. But sometimes there's brokenness in families. Hay cosas que no se han sanado. There are things that haven't been healed. Cosas que tus hijos están recibiendo porque tú no has sanado. Things that your children are receiving because you weren't healed. Tus hijos no merecen recibir el padre quebrantado que eres. And your children shouldn't be receiving a broken father or a broken mother. Si tú quieres una familia sana, if you want a, a healthy family, tú tienes que sanar primero. You need to get healthy. Tienes que pedir perdón. You need to ask for forgiveness from people. Pedir perdón es difícil y complicado. And it's really hard to ask for forgiveness or to forgive. Como muchos saben aquí yo crecí en una familia cristiana. A lot of people know I grew up in a Christian family. Y mi papá fue un buen padre. My dad was a good dad. Tenía sus defectos porque no es perfecto, nadie es perfecto. Nobody's perfect, he had his defects. Y yo soy la única hija en la casa, And son I'm dos hermanos. And I'm the only daughter in the house. Entonces siempre fue como, ay, la hija siempre como un poco de favoritismo so por decirlo así. So because she was the daughter, she was the favorite. Y bueno, yo crecí, mamá, papá, todo muy bonito, yendo a la iglesia. So, you know, we all went to church, we were just like a regular nice family. Y un día como eh, misioneros, nosotros viajamos a Argentina por un par de meses. Years later, when we were married, we were missionaries, we moved to Argentina for like six months. Y Dios me dijo allá que yo tenía que perdonar a mi papá. And when I was in Argentina, the Lord spoke to me and told me I needed to forgive my father. Y eso fue algo como por un mes que yo tuve en mi corazón. And for a month, he just kept repeating it to me. Y yo dije, yo no voy a decirle a mi papá que me, que yo le, o sea, que perdonarlo, ¿por qué? Él nunca me ha hecho nada malo. And she, she was like, I'm not going to go tell my dad I forgive him whenever he never really did anything to me. Mm, mm, mm. Decía, no voy a hacerlo. Not doing that. <laughs> Porque yo no tenía como un resentimiento, yo no sentía que él me había hecho nada. I, I didn't have, I didn't feel any bitterness toward him. He never did anything mm. big to me. La cosa es que regresamos a Panamá. So we came back to Panama. Yo dije, ah, se fue este sentimiento. And I said, all right, fine. God, stop talking to me about Pero that. Pero no, el sentimiento seguía ahí. But even back in Panama, it just kept coming back. Y yo decía, no, yo no puedo hablar con papá, yo no puedo. I can't talk to my dad that way. There's o sea, no reason to. Mi papá, yo lo veía como papá. For me, for me, my dad was like, dad. Sí, respeto para ti, papá. So, we have to respect <laughs> him. Like, he is mucho. the father. 
Hasta que un día yo dije, este es el día porque mi corazón latía tan fuerte y fuerte. Era como era como una necesidad que yo tenía de hablar con él. And it became like a need, like I need to talk to him. Y yo dije, okay, papá llega como a las tres y media, cuatro, yo me voy para su casa y lo voy a esperar en la silla que hay en la sala, la primera silla. I said, alright, I know my dad gets off work at like three thirty, so I'm going to go. I'm just going to sit in the living room at my parents' house until he comes back. Y estaba ahí, ahí, solo esperando. I just sat there waiting and waiting and waiting. De repente, yo veo que él viene. And then finally I saw him coming in. Y yo no esperé. Yo me and I didn't wait. He didn't even get through the door. I got él, up. Y él venía caminando y caminando. And he was just walking in from work. Y, y él dice, ah, voy a ir a quitarme los zapatos. And he said, uh, let me, I'm going to go take off my shoes. Y yo me fui detrás de él. And I just followed him. Yo dije, yo necesito, si quiero quitarle los zapatos, se lo voy a quitar, pero yo necesito I hablar said, con él. I said, fine, if you want to take off your shoes, take off your shoes, but we're going to talk now. Y él se fue a su cuarto y yo me fui al cuarto. And he went into his room and I just followed him into his room. Y yo empecé a llorar y yo le dije, papá, yo necesito que, o sea, yo te perdono. And I just started crying and I just said, dad, I just need you to know I forgive you. Y él se quedó así, dice, pero ¿por qué? And he just looked at me and he said, but why? Yo le dije, papá, tú eres un gran papá, tú eres muy bueno, pero yo recibí esto en Argentina que yo tengo que perdonarte. I said, Dad, you've been a great dad and you've always been wonderful, but when I was in Argentina, I felt like I just needed to tell you that I forgive you. Y él me abrazó y me dijo, claro que sí. And he gave me, gave me a hug and he said, of course. Y yo sentí como que algo se rompió, exactamente no sé qué era. I honestly don't know what broke, but I felt like something broke. Pero fue un tiempo muy bonito, que si yo no hubiera sido obediente a la voz de Dios. And it became this beautiful moment to where if I had not listened to the voice of God. Yo creo que yo hubiera seguido con esa carga. I would probably still feel that burden today. Y a veces nosotros sentimos una palabra, tenemos un sentimiento. Sometimes we may feel a word or, or have a word or a feeling. De hablar con papá y mamá. To talk to one of our parents. Y a veces decimos, no. And we say, no. No me va a escuchar. They're not going to listen to me. No me va a entender. They're not going to understand me. Él no sabe lo que me pasa. They don't know what's going on in Ni my life. Ni siquiera se acuerda de lo que me dijo. They don't even remember that they said that to me. Ni siquiera se acuerda del mal gesto que me hizo. They don't even remember the time they did that thing to y me. Y nosotros vamos cargando y cargando con eso en and nuestro corazón. And we keep corazón. carrying it and carrying it. Y, y es complicado cuando tú cargas tanto en tu corazón que no sana. And it's really complicated when you're carrying so much stuff in your heart that hasn't been healed. Porque tus hijos lo perciben. Because then your kids start to perceive that. Y comienzan a ver ese como eh, resentimiento que tú tienes con tus padres. And they start to feel the resentment that you have towards your parents. Quiero contar una pequeña historia que encontré en internet. So I want to share a story that I found on the internet. Dice eh, que un predicador un día entró a un tren. There was a preacher one day who got on a train. Y él se subió y se sentó. He got on the train and he sat down. Y la persona que estaba al lado era un muchacho. And then there was a, this young guy sitting next to him. Y él vio que el muchacho estaba como pensativo y preocupado. And he saw that this young guy was really thoughtful and he seemed really worried. Y solo veía por la ventana fijamente. And this young guy was just looking out the window. Y el pastor le preguntó al muchacho, ¿estás bien? And the pastor finally asked him, he said, are you, are you okay? Y el muchacho le dijo, no. And the young man said, no. Y el pastor dijo, ¿por qué? The pastor asked why. Y él le dijo, Hace un tiempo atrás salí sin el consentimiento de mis padres salí de la casa. And the young man said, years ago I left my house without my parents um, giving consent or knowing about it. Y le dice al pastor, y escribí a mi familia hace un par de semanas a ver si podía regresar a casa y nunca me, han, me respondieron. And I just wrote, I wrote my parents two weeks ago asking if I could come home and they haven't responded to me. Y él dice, la única señal que yo pedí a ellos que si yo podía regresar a casa era que el día que yo regresara and he said the only thing that I asked for my parents is that if I come back the day that I return que yo, uh, eh, que yo viera en el árbol de manzana que estaba enfrente de su casa uh, that in front of the house there was an apple tree que, que pusieran un pañuelo blanco 
if they could put out just a white cloth when I would go home, then I would know it was okay for me to come in. Que esa fuera la señal para that would be my sign that I could go inside. Dice, pero mamá nunca me contestó. But my mom never responded. Dice, y ahora estoy aquí viendo por la ventana a ver si veo el pañuelo. And here I'm sitting, we're about to go by my house and I'm looking to see if that white cloth is there. Y dice que el pastor le dijo, ¿por qué no hacemos algo? And the pastor said, why don't we do something? Tú cierra los ojos. Close your eyes. Y yo voy a ir viendo por la ventana. And I'll watch out the window and see if I see one. A ver si veo el pañuelo en el árbol. Maybe I'll see the white cloth and I can tell you. Y dice que pasó un rato. So time went by. Y el muchacho le preguntó al pastor. And the young man finally asked. Pues ya pasamos la casa. Did, are we, did we pass the house yet? Y el pastor dice, sí, ya pasamos la casa. The pastor said, yeah, we, pa we went by. Y el muchacho by. abrió los ojos y dice, pero cuéntame, ¿qué viste? And the young man opened his eyes and said, well, what did you see? Was there anything there? Y el pastor, ¿viste el pañuelo blanco? Did you see the white cloth? Y el pastor le dijo, no vi ningún pañuelo blanco. And the pastor said there were no white cloths. Y su, el, el semblante del muchacho fue triste. And the young man became sad. Pero el pastor volteó a verlo y le dijo, But the pastor then looked at him and said, no vi solo uno. There wasn't one white cloth. Todo el árbol de manzana está lleno de pañuelos the blancos. The entire apple tree was covered in white cloths. Y yo meditaba en esa historia tan bonita. And I've been meditating on that story. Y yo digo, wow, cómo son los papás. And I thought, uh, it's amazing how parents are. No importa la situación en la que tú te vayas de tu casa. It, it doesn't matter what situation you're in when you leave the house. No importa si tú te vas sin decirles nada. If you can run away from home. Yo sé que muchos de los que están aquí ya son mayores, jóvenes, here, adultos, casi no hay you're jóvenes. Young adults, you're older, you've already left home. Pero igual tenemos papá y mamá. But we still de... have mothers and fathers. A a algunos no los tienen. Some have passed on. Y yo decía, wow, el corazón de los padres es tan grande para sus hijos. And I thought, it's amazing how big parents' hearts can be for their children. Que a ellos no le importa lo, la maldad o lo malo que hicieron. That the, their parents' hearts are so big, they don't care the, even the bad things that you may have done against them. Ellos siempre van a tener las puertas abiertas they para ti. They always ti. keep the door open for you when you come siempre. home. Siempre. Always. Y es muy interesante porque eso es lo que hace Jesús también nuestro padre. It's amazing because that's what Jesus does as well, and He is a father. Nosotros somos pecador, Señor. Hice, cometí este pecado. We sin and we say, Father, I, I've sinned. Pero él siempre tiene los brazos abiertos para nosotros. But He always keeps His arms open for us. Siempre. Always. Esto no estaba en el papel, pero lo voy a empezar ahora. So that was the story I read and I wanted to share, but we're going to really get into it now. Ahora, bueno, muchos de los que están aquí saben que es una familia. So a lot of you, you know what a family is. Una familia es ordenada por papá, mamá, We hijos. Have father, mother, children. Punto. Period. That's it. No hay puntos suspensivos en la Biblia. There's no ellipsis here. That's a family. Hombre y mujer se unen. Man, woman, they get together. Se reproducen. They reproduce. Punto. Period. Ahí no sigue más nada. There's, there's nothing else. El that's, mundo, that's a family, in case you're punto. confused. El mundo puede decir muchas cosas, pero la Biblia dice hombre The world can say whatever they want, we go by what the Bible tells us. Y para los que quieren como seguir la referencia, no sé si hay alguien nuevo aquí, el origen de la familia en la Biblia so está en Génesis. For, for those of you who like to keep notes or anything, the first reference to family is in Genesis. Está en Génesis 2.24. It's Genesis 2.24. No los vamos a leer, puedes anotarlo. We're y not going to read it, but if you need it, you can write it down and read it later. Génesis 2.24. Genesis 2.24. Que habla sobre eh, el hombre dejará a su padre y a su madre. Y and todo it eso. talks about how The father, uh, the young people will leave their parents and they'll form their own family. Y Génesis 1, 27 y 28 habla del mandato que le dio a la familia. And then Genesis 1, 26 and 27 talks about the commandment that God gave to the family. Era fructificados y multiplíquense. Which was be fruitful and multiply. Yo estoy viendo mucho aquí, mucho bebé. I'm seeing lots of multiplication going on here. <laughs> Y es bueno porque es un mandato. And that's good. That's a commandment from God. Y, y bueno, los que han decidido no tener hijos, bueno, allá con Dios, ¿verdad? And for those of you who chosen, you don't want to have kids, that's, that's your decision. That's es fine. Es tu decisión, está bien. Entonces es un mandato que el Señor no, nos manda. But this is a commandment that God gave. Y solo para que, que vean, el fun, la fundación de la familia fue en Génesis. So the foundation of family is in Genesis. Ajá. Cuando alguien se casa, Whenever someone gets married, viene a ser uno. They become one. Y comienza a crecer una familia. And then the family begins growing. Empiezan las reglas, empiezan las, 
eh, como los mandatos. Yeah, then they start, each family begins to form their own structure and culture within their own home. Y es muy bonito porque tú los ves crecer, cómo se and van And it's beautiful because you see each, you see these two people grow into their own thing. Y cuando ya se sienten listos, entonces vienen los hijos. And then once they're ready, they have kids and it just keeps multiplying. Y hay veces también cuando no estamos muy listos, entonces vienen los hijos, pero igual no importa. And, well, sometimes they're not ready and they still have kids, but it, they're multiplying either way. <laughs> sí. Sí, entonces es como muy bonito ver cómo el Señor da el mandato y ver cómo nos fructificamos just, y nos multiplicamos. It's just a wonderful thing to see how God gives a, gives a word, it happens, and then you see it grow before you. Dios estableció la familia para que los hijos sean felices. God established a... God established the family so that children could grow up in a happy environment. Para que puedan aprender principios correctos. So that children can learn biblical principles. Y para que se preparen para la vida. And so that they can then be prepared and trained to be sent out into life. Qué complicado es en este tiempo como enseñar a nuestros hijos. Today it's very complicated to teach your children biblical values. Hay mucho como distracción, mucha. There's so many distractions. Muchas cosas. Pero el Señor nos da la sabiduría y el entendimiento de cómo hacerlo. But the Lord will give us wisdom and, and strategies and how to do it. Yo me acuerdo, eh, mi mamá una vez me dijo, Carmi, venga, voy a enseñarle a hacer arroz. I remember one day my mom called me and said, Carmi, come here, I'm going to teach you how to make rice. Porque en Panamá comemos mucho arroz, todos los días. Because in Panama we eat rice every single day. Y tiene que ser comida fresca, no se puede comer del día anterior. And you don't eat leftovers, it has to be made that day. Las mamás cocinan mucho. So my mom was cooking all the time, every day. Y yo recuerdo que yo tenía alrededor de siete, ocho años. And I was about seven or eight years old. Y ella me eh, me enseñó dos veces, por dos días seguidos. My mom taught me two times, two days in a row. Y ella me dice, venga, así se hace, se pone, se mide, se de. She said, okay, cocina. this is how you measure the rice, this is how you make it, this is how you cook it. Y el segundo día, me, lo mismo. The next day, exact same thing. El tercer día me dice, venga, usted va a hacer el arroz hoy. The third day, she said, all right, now you're making all the rice today. Yo estaba tan emocionada. I was really excited about it. La estufa era, bueno, yo no soy grande, entonces la estufa era. I'm not big, grande. but back then I was even smaller. <laughs> Entonces la estufa me quedaba como alta. So the stove was like up to here on me at that time. <laughs> Entonces mi mamá buscó un banquito para que yo me subiera. So my mom got me a little step stool so I could step and, and be over the stove. Y, y yo veo, yo lave el arroz y todo. And I, you have to wash the rice to get it ready for cooking. Y tan emocionada. Y yo veo eh, la olla con el agua hirviendo. And I saw the pot with all of the boiling water y in it. Y yo tan emocionada agarré ese eh, bowl. And I was so excited that I got the plato. Plato. Y lo eché en la paila. And I just threw all the rice in. Y el agua todo se And the salió. water splashed all over me. Y me quemó el brazo. And it burned my whole arm. Y claro, mi mamá estaba como, ah, oh, pero ¿por qué lo hiciste así? And my mom was like, why would you throw it in like that? Porque en Latinoamérica. Because in Latin America. <laughs> una cosa aquí que yo sí he visto. So this is a funny thing of cultural differences between the states and Latin America. Y las mamás aquí son como, oh, honey, come here. In Latin America, and here in the states, if your daughter burns your arm, you're like, oh, sweetie, come over here, let me give you a hug. Oh, you are so sweet. Don't oh, worry you're so about sweet it. and wonderful, and everything is great about you all the time. He's trying to play everything. He says in English. Say, yeah. okay. I did. I did. I was speaking English, right? I said English. You are. Yeah. Repeating English. Okay. Was I repeating what you were saying? I don't know. It's it's all sounds the same to me. I don't know anymore. Okay. Entonces, uh huh. Here it's more like oh honey. Ta, ta, ta. So here that's what they do. You're all like oh poor baby. In Panama, in Panama is. Por qué hiciste eso? That's not in Panama. In Panama, like why would you do that? You're so stupid. I told you. I told you not to do that. I told you to be this careful. This is why you do that. That's why you're burned. It's and your fault. Bang, it's your and hand. they whack you with a sandal. <laughs> Here, aquí es más como amable. Yeah, here you guys are nice to people. Pero aprendimos un montón. But, but hey, we learned a lot in Panama. <laughs> aprendemos. Y, y bueno, mi mamá agarró, después que me regañó. So after she yelled at me. <laughs> me puso una cremita. My mom put this cream on me. Y, y sinceramente, o sea, no recuerdo como la mala experiencia de haberme quemado, sino recuerdo el hecho de que ella tomó el tiempo. But here's the thing. I don't remember so much the bad experience of being burned. I more ex I more remember the experience of my mom taking care of me after. Eso es lo importante. And that's the most important part que of it. Que tú tomes tiempo con tus hijos. That you take time with your children. Los que tienen hijos chiquititos. Some of you have really small children. ¿Eh? 
No fácil, pero es como más como, ok, yo quiero enseñarles. It isn't easy, but even from that age you start to teach them. Ya cuando tienen siete años y un poco más adelante, si, seven, older, si you, no se les enseña, ya se les vuelve a hacer un poco más If you don't teach them at those ages, ages, then they're just going to go way off the rails. Es, es más fácil cuando están chiquititos. It's easier if you start when they're just little babies. Y yo pues he dividido este mensaje en varia, en tres puntos. So I have three points. Es el rol de papá. El so rol de mamá. The, mother, the father's role, the mother's role. Y el rol de los hijos. And the children's roles. Y, y yo estaba como, Señor, debo hablar del rol de los esposos y las esposas. And I, I thought about talking about the roles of husband and wife. Y traté ayer de añadir eso al mensaje, and, pero sinceramente yo sentí que no era como el And I tried Momento. to add that to the message, but I just felt like the Lord was saying, don't, don't share on that. Como que no, no entraba ahí. Yo dije, yeah. bueno, Señor, no lo yeah, voy a hablar. it wasn't right for this message, so I, we're not going to talk about that. Entonces vamos a hablar... Rápido. So we're going to move fast. Eh, del rol del papá. We're going to talk quickly about the role of the father. El padre ejerce una figura protectora. The father should be a protective figure in the home. De autoridad. The figure of authority. El que, sea, el que hace que se cumplan las leyes junto a mamá. The o las one who makes sure the law gets done. Este rol es muy importante para el bien y funcionamiento de la familia. It's very important that this role is fulfilled for the function for the family to function correctly. Si en el hogar no ponemos reglas. If there are no rules in the home, tu hogar va a ser un desastre. Your home will be chaos. Es como un rompecabezas que quieres armar pero no vas a poder. It's like having a pile a pile of puzzle pieces in front of you that you can't put together. Porque no vas a poder encajar las cosas porque es un desastre. You won't be able to fit anything because it'll together because it'll just be a disaster. Yo he escuchado muchos papás que dicen, yo no tengo paciencia. I've heard of a lot of fathers saying, I have no patience. Yo no tengo autoridad sobre ellos. I, and I, and I, I don't know what to do with them. I have no authority over my own yo kids. Yo no puedo ir con mis hijos. I can't do anything with my kids. El Señor te ha dado la capacidad para tener un trabajo. But that's not true because the Lord has given you the ability to have a job where you have authority. Y hacerlo bien. And you do it well. Puedes hacer un buen trabajo en la casa if you también. Can do good, if you can do well at your job, you can do well in your home. Si tú quieres tener hijos fuertes y saludables. If you want strong, healthy children. Como decimos en Panamá, mano dura. Like in, we say in Panama, you need to have a heavy hand. Claro, no es pegarles, no es maltratarlos. Hitting, we're not talking about that kind of stuff. Es una autoridad sana. We're talking about having, a, knowing how to have authority in your home. Una autoridad que hace un bienestar en el It's hogar. It's the authority that makes the home function. Normalmente los hijos varones. Normally, the, the boys, the male children, Quieren ser como papá. they want to be like their dad. They see their dad and like, oh, he's a, a police officer, a firefighter. Ellos siempre dicen, Yo quiero ser como papá. And they're always like, I want to be like my dad. Mi papá es un bombero. My dad's a firefighter. Mi papá es un policía. My dad's a police officer. Y siempre ellos quieren ser como tú. And they want to be like you. ¿Qué ejemplo le estás dando a tus hijos? But what are you being for them to be like? ¿Qué ejemplo tú estás sembrando en ellos que un día, que un día ellos van a sembrar a What sus hijos? Into their lives that they are going to grow up to be? Cuida tus acciones, papá. You have to be careful of your own actions. Porque si tú no las cuidas, Because if you don't care for them, tienes ojos en la casa que te están viendo. If you don't care for what you do, you have eyes all in your house watching everything you do. Y un día te van a imitar a ti. And that they will imitate you one y day. Y tristemente tú vas a decir, fue por la culpa del papá. And sadly, one day you will have the realization like, this is on me. I did this. El rol paterno proporciona estabilidad. Familiar. The father role is supposed to bring stability to the home. Es la base del desarrollo social. It is the foundation of social development in the family. Por eso es que el rol del papá es tan importante en el hogar. That's why the role of a father is so important in the home. Porque el hogar funciona. Because the home continues to work. Los hijos te respetan. The kids are supposed to respect you. Cuando tú tomas buenas decisiones. When you make right decisions. Cuando tú provees para tu familia. When you provide for your family. Cuando tú eres autoridad. When you show that you are the authority in your family. Tus hijos quieren tener armonía contigo. Your children then want to be in harmony with you. Quieren pasar tiempo contigo. They want to spend time with you. Quiero hablar de tres 
como cualidades de los papás. Yo sé que hay muchas. I know there's lots of qualities that make a father, but pero, I wanted to share three. Pero quiero hablar tres. Papá tiene autoridad, que ya First hemos of all, hablado. We already said father has authority. La palabra dice que creó Adán primero y después Eva. The Bible says that God created Adam first and then Eve. O sea que el hombre es la cabeza. So, Adam is the, was the head of the household. Hay muchas personas que se toman eso muy como yo soy el hombre. A lot of guys they take it and they're like I am the man. Tú me tienes que respetar. You must respect me. Pero el Señor nos manda como él es la cabeza, pero nosotros la la por decirlo así el cuello. So, <laughs> it's kind of like men are the head and like women are like the neck. Sí, si el cuello no se mueve la cabeza no If se the mueve. Neck move, that head isn't going anywhere. Entonces como tener ese respeto al esposo porque el Señor lo creó a él primero. So there, yes, the man is the head, but there is an equal respect amongst them. Y a veces eso causa como fricción en las casas porque yo sé que muchas mujeres quieren tomar el mando. And I know that there are a lot of women who like want to be in total control. No me quiero meter en ese tema, es un tema And diferente. And we're not going to get into all that right now. Pero el Señor ha dado autoridad sobre el hombre. But God did give men authority. Hay esposas que no quieren que su esposo tome autoridad. And there are wives who don't want their husband to have any authority. Ejemplo, si un papá está como eh, disciplinando al hijo. Like let's just say there's a father who's disciplining their children. La esposa no le gusta eso. And the wife doesn't like it. Ay, no lo hagas, está muy chiquito, él no entiende. Don't do that. He's he doesn't understand what you're talking about. Es que está pasando un mal rato, pobrecito. He's no having lo hagas. a bad day. No. El trabajo de disciplina y autoridad de los dos. That the, both parents have to discipline their children. A veces tienes que dejar que tu esposo lo haga. And sometimes you have to let your husband discipline the children. Porque él, él tiene que tomar la autoridad. Because he needs to have authority in the home. No una autoridad como dictadora, como un dictador. Obviously not like a dictator authority. Pero una autoridad que viene de parte del Señor. But the kind of authority that comes from the Lord. Y usted dice, pero ¿cómo es esa autoridad que viene de parte del Señor? ¿Cómo? Y usted se pregunta, ¿cómo es esa autoridad? So you, you may ask, what does that look like? What does the authority that comes from the Lord even look like? Lea la Biblia. Read your Bible. <laughs> en los proverbios hay tanta cosa bonita just ahí. Read, just read Proverbs. It's all through there. Papá, yo sé que los papás son muy trabajadores. I know that a lot of fathers here work really hard. Agarre cinco minutos. Take five minutes. Lea los proverbios. Just go read Proverbs for five minutes a day. Y usted se va a dar cuenta la riqueza que hay ahí para hablar a nuestras vidas. And you will see the riches that are in that book of wisdom. Y si usted ora, papá, si usted ora, si usted tiene problema en su casa con sus fathers, hijos. And fathers, if you have problems in your home with your children. Pídale al Señor la sabiduría. Pray, ask God for wisdom. El entendimiento. For understanding. Estrategias. Or strategies. Para que su hijo se vuelva a usted. So that your children will come back to you. Para que su familia esté sana so y en armonía. So that your children and your family will be healthy. Ajá. Segundo punto. Number two. El papá es protector y proveedor. Father is protector and provider. El papá fue creado para proteger. Fathers were created to protect. Mi mamá nos mantenía a nosotros, por decirlo así, la semana porque mi papá trabajaba todos my, los días. My father worked all week, so my mom took care of us during the during y the Y había week. veces que mi papá, porque mi papá manejaba trailer. My, my dad was a truck driver, so there were times he wasn't there. Y él se iba por tres, cinco días And y regresaba. And he'd be gone three to five days driving. Y déjenme decirle una cosa, que cuando nos quedamos con mamá, era como, que okay, nos quedamos con mamá And más relajado. Whenever dad was gone, we were all like, all right, we just get to be with mom for a few days. No, no era que nos portábamos mal, pero era más como relajado. And, and things were just more relaxed. We had a lot more fun. Y cuando papá llegaba, But when dad came home, ahí sí andábamos derechito. We were all very well behaved. Y sentíamos que cuando papá llegaba, se llegaba la protección. Because whenever, whenever dad got home, it was like the authority has come back. Llegaba la protección y sabíamos que él estaba proveyendo para nosotros. Entonces eso nos daba esa seguridad como niños. El Señor quiere que seamos, que sean padres que guarden a sus hijos. So the, the, the Lord wants you to be fathers who protect and provide Que for sientan your esa seguridad con ustedes. That they can feel secure with you. Lastimosamente yo he visto muchos muchachos que dicen, no, no, yo no quiero estar con mi papá. 
Um, sadly, there are a lot of young people, a lot of who don't want to be with their parents. They don't want to be around their dads. Porque los papás son como muy cascarrabia, muy Because difíciles. sometimes dads go to the extreme and they're too hard on their kids. Que los muchachos no quieren pasar tiempo con los papás. And so their kids are scared of them and don't want to be, or uncomfortable with them and don't want to be around y them. Y sinceramente es triste. And that's sad. Es triste como ver como hijos se alejan. It's sad to see your own children scared to be with you. Es, es triste. It's just sad. Sí. Número tres, los elogios de papá son importantes. So, number three, the eyes of the father are very important. El papá apoya a su hijo. Fathers should support their children. Tú eres buen hijo. You're a good child. Estás haciendo bien. You're doing good. Tú eres bueno en la escuela. You're good at school. Tú eres inteligente. You're very smart. A veces los papás solo decimos qué es lo que te está pasando. Sometimes dads just criticize their children all the time. Tú haces todo mal. You're doing everything bad. Why are you doing it like this? Uh, hay un estudio que se hizo. There was a study that was done. Que el 80% de la comunicación entre papás, padres e hijos. That says 80% of communication between fathers and their children. Son regaños, insultos, órdenes. Are insults, rebukes, or giving orders. Nunca sale de su boca una palabra sabia para Out sus hijos. Out of their mouths, positive things rarely come. Haz que tus hijos escuchen palabras llenas de sabiduría. Make sure that your children are hearing words that are full of wisdom. Cuando tú hablas palabras sabias, tu hijo las agarra en el corazón y él empieza a When creer esas palabras. When you speak wise words, your children receive those and they start to really think about them. Ah, yo soy inteligente. Oh, I'm smart. Papá me ama. Dad loves me. Papá me dijo que yo soy bonita. Dad told me I'm, I'm handsome. Y esas cosas crecen en la autoestima de uno. Those things build the self-esteem of your children. Papá, si tú tienes hijas. If you have daughters, fathers. Y tú nunca tomas tiempo con ellas. And you never take time with them. Les dices a ellas que las amas. You don't tell them that you love them. Un abrazo. Ellas van a buscar eso afuera. You don't tell them that they're beautiful and give them hugs. They'll look for it elsewhere. Y no queremos eso. No queremos and que se pierdan. And we don't want that. ¿Verdad? Me estoy cortando muchas cosas porque ya el tiempo se me está cortando. Sí. I'm, I'm going through because I see time's already. Así que le animo fast. a los papás busquen al señor. So fathers seek the Lord. Cinco minutos lea los proverbios. Five minutes read Proverbs. Si usted le da pereza agarrar la Biblia agarre su teléfono If it's porque también. If it's boring for you to read out of a book, we'll read it on your phone. Léalo en la Biblia rapidito. Just read it. Take five minutes. Es alimento a su alma. It'll feed your soul. Y te ayudará cómo criar a tus hijos And también. It'll, it'll show you how to raise your children. Vamos a hablar del rol de mamá. Now let's look at mothers. Estoy hablando rapidito. Tengo mucho. All right, I have a lot to go through. Entonces, yo quiero hablar sobre una mujer. All right, so I want to share about a woman. Que se llama Susana her Wesley. Name was, her name was Susanna Wesley. Yo leí esta historia y fue como, wow, qué interesante. I read about her and I thought, this is amazing. Esta mujer es interesante. Vamos a leerlo. Well, let's read this story. Dice, Susana Ansley era ahí la hija mayor de 25 hermanos. So, Susanna Ansley was her, her maiden name. She was the oldest daughter of 25 brothers and sisters. Fue una mujer... Fue una mujer yeah. inteligente y estudiosa. She was a, a very smart and studious woman. Se casó y tuvo 19 hijos. She got married and had 19 of her own children. De los cuales nueve murieron. And nine died during their infancy. Susana crió a sus hijos en una sabiduría inteligente, con una gran sabiduría e inteligencia. Susana raised her children with utmost wisdom. Imagínense esto. Dedicaba cada mañana y tarde a orar y meditar so en las escrituras. So her daily schedule was this. Every day she dedicated morning and afternoon to prayer and studying scriptures. Eh, tenía una escuela doméstica para enseñar seis horas al día a and sus hijos. And she also had um, her own. She did home. She homeschooled her kids, and they would do school together for six hours every day. Ella fue su única maestra. And she was the only teacher. Les dio un método para organizar sus vidas. And she taught them a method of how to organize their lives. Unas prioridades y unos valores para dirigirse. And she taught them what were priorities, what were values, and how to direct their own steps. Basadas en la palabra de Dios. And it was all based on the word of God. Fue muy estricta y disciplinada. She was very strict and she was a disciplinarian. Imagínense, con 10 niños. I mean, she had like 10 kids. Y encima de eso los 
que hacer de la casa. And also the cooking and cleaning and all the things that wives and mothers do. Yo me quedé pensando en eso y digo, pero es que los años de antes eran como largos. And I, uh, those, okay? Los años, o sea, los and días. she said, you know, I, I, I was thinking about this the other day, like before and times past, the days just felt longer. <laughs> Sí, porque usted hace algo en la mañana y ya son las 3 de la tarde. Because nowadays it's like it feels like you wake up, you make breakfast and it's 3 in the afternoon all of a sudden. Es como que no te da tiempo. Entonces, like there's no time for anything Entonces anymore. esta mujer aprovechaba muy bien sus días. And so the, the women back then they really took advantage of those hours. Ajá, y ella en su vejez dio cinco puntos para las mamás. So, whenever she was an older woman, she gave five points for uh, as like Advice for mothers. Dice, enséñale a orar a tus hijos pronto empiecen a hablar. Number one, teach your children to pray as soon as they can speak. Número dos, destruye el egoísmo, colabora con la salvación de sus almas. Number two, destroy selfishness and help them focus on help reaching other people's souls. Número tres, no permitas que ningún acto pecaminoso pase sin castigo. Number three, don't allow any sinful behavior from your children to continue without discipline. Número cuatro, fomenta el respeto por la propiedad ajena incluso en las cosas insignificantes. Number four, teach your children to respect other people's property even if it seems like something small and insignificant. Número cinco, Cumple todas las promesas que hagas a tus hijos. And number five, fulfill every promise you make to your children. Si usted mamá le dice a su hijo, yo te voy a comprar un juguete so mañana. If you, so if you tell your child, tomorrow I'm going to buy you a toy. Ese niño por respeto y amor a ti, porque tú eres la mamá, él va a decir, mamá me va a comprar un regalo. That child, out of respect and love for you, is, gonna, is just going to believe you. There's, they, mama's going to buy me a toy tomorrow. Si usted se le olvida por alguna razón, and if you forget, ese niño va a tener un dolor grande en su corazón por mucho tiempo. It may not be a big deal for you, but it's going to be a big deal for them. Entonces tratemos como de balancear las cosas. And so we have to learn to balance things. Y esta mujer, so this woman, fue la madre de Charles Wesley. She was the mother of Charles Wesley. Uno de los más prof, profli, prolíficos, perdón. Escritores de himnos de la historia de la iglesia. One of the most prolific writers of hymns in church history. Y Susana Wesley también fue la madre de John Wesley. She was also the mother of John Wesley. Uno de los más grandes predicadores. One of the greatest preachers in history. Del evangelio. Sí. Entonces como wow esta mujer, mujer dejó un legado tan grande. So this woman left an incredible legacy. Ella sabía con seguridad que ella enseñarles la palabra de Dios a sus hijos desde pequeño ella, ellos iban a tener frutos. She could stand firm on the truth that if she taught her children biblical principles from the time they were babies they would walk in it through the rest of Pero por qué ella vivía en esa seguridad? How could she walk in that kind of assurity? Porque ella confiaba en la palabra de Dios. Because she believed what God said. Ella decía, mis hijos son para el Señor. She said, my children belong to God. Yo los enseño. So I will teach them how to walk Yo les enseño them. la palabra y les enseño a orar. My job is to teach them how to pray. Ellos and recordarán them. eso un día. And they will remember that throughout their lives. Y mire cómo salieron diez de los do, de los diez hijos Dos fueron como muy. And out of that dozen children, two of them are some of the most impactful people in the history of the church. Uno de los versículos que dice la Biblia es, no lo vamos a leer, solo lo voy a mencionar. Es, okay, so I want to mention a verse to you. Instruye al niño en su camino. It says very simply, instruct your children in the ways to go. Y cuando fuere viejo, and when they're old, no se apartará de. They will not separate from. Yo me acuerdo a mi mamá todos los sábados. I remember my mom every single Saturday. Después que desayunábamos, after we had breakfast, ella tomaba media hora. She would take half an hour. Y eran los, la media hora más larga de toda mi vida. The longest half hour of my life. Porque ella leía la Biblia. Because she would read the Bible. Nos preguntaba qué habíamos entendido. And then she would ask us what she read about. Y orábamos. And then we would pray together. Y eso ya lo hizo por mucho tiempo. And we did that for a long, long time. Y sinceramente yo le doy muchas gracias a Dios porque. And now that I'm older, I thank God so much. Porque mi mamá se tomaba ese tiempo para instruirnos la palabra. Because my mom took that time to teach us the Word of God. Y es interesante porque yo no lo hago con mis hijos. 
And it's interesting because I haven't been doing that with my kids. Porque yo digo a veces que no tengo tiempo. Because sometimes it feels like we have no time. Pero yo digo, Señor, dame la sabiduría, el entendimiento para yo hablarles a ellos. Give me wisdom on how I can teach them in my No way. es que me siente con ellos hacerlos. I may not necessarily sit down and do a teaching like my mom did. Pero en el día estoy con ellos hablando y hablando. But throughout the day, I'm talking to them, having little conversations. Yo sé que las mamás somos ocupadas también. I know that mothers, we're all very busy. Y nosotros como mamás tenemos ese privilegio and as mothers we have a privilege de haber dado a luz un hijo which is to have given birth to a child y brindarle a ese bebé desde pequeño lo que está en la palabra and to give from the time they were born the light of the gospel instruirlos en la palabra to instruct them in the word of God y yo cada vez que vengo a la iglesia yo estoy tan contenta de ver tantos niños acá and en la esquina and every time I come to church I'm always so happy to see so many children up here quizás ellos no entiendan las palabras de la alabanza they may not understand anything that's happening in, in worship pero su alma lo está recibiendo but their spirit does receive it y eso jamás lo van a olvidar and they will never forget that mamá y papá me llevaban todos los domingos a la iglesia mom and dad took me to church every single Sunday y yo me siento en una esquina y yo bailaba y bailaba and I would go in a corner and I would dance y yo digo wow o sea es un sacrificio para los papás vestir dos, tres niños ir a la iglesia it is a sacrifice for parents to get their children ready on a Sunday morning and bring them to church pero papá y mamá vas a recibir una recompensa por eso but you know what mom, dad you will receive a reward from that Porque one day. Estás un trabajo perfecto, because you are el mejor doing, trabajo. you're doing the right thing. You're doing what you're supposed to do with your children. Ahora hablamos del rol de los hijos. All right, the role of the children. Yo soy hija. I'm a daughter. No fui rebelde. I was never rebellious. Nunca tuve la necesidad de experimentar el mundo no tenía ese deseo I really never had any reason or desire to go into the world. Pero uno de mis hermanos sí. But one of my brothers did. Entonces fue como bien complicado para mi mamá y mi papá esa situación. Very complicated for my parents the situation that was with them. Y y pues mi mamá siempre, cada vez que mi hermano llegaba le decía, "Vente, Olman, tú eres hijo de Dios, tú eres every bendecido." Every time, every time my brother would come home after being out in the world, my mom would be sitting there waiting for him, and when he walked in, he would she would pull him to the side and say, You are called to be a child of God. Come sit with me and let's talk about Jesus. De su boca yo nunca le escuché decir borracho, te vas a quedar borracho. You know what? She never I never once heard her ever say to my brother, you're a, a sinning drunk. Get out of my house. Jamás la escuché. Never happened. Ni a mi papá tampoco. No, for my dad either. Y fueron palabras que a mi hermano le fueron creciendo en su corazón. And th this these conversations that my mom would have with him and the words that she would speak to him grew over time. Y ahora pues mi hermano entiende por las cosas que él pasó. And now my brother is older and has his own kids and now he understands. Y, y él está tratando de hacer lo mismo con su hijo, no te vayas, And no now vayas. he's doing what my mother did, teaching his children just like my mother did. Entonces lo que tú enseñas a tus hijos ahorita, ellos lo van a hacer what con you sus teach hijos. your children right now hijos, will be the hijos. example they use to teach yeah. their children. Yeah. El rol de los hijos es obedecer a los papás. Porque hay una promesa en Efesios 6, 1 al 3. Y no me lo aprendí solo para la prédica. Me lo aprendí a los 6 años. I este this at six years old from y my nunca más se me olvidó ese And versículo. Never it. Y ese versículo es, hijo, obedeced a vuestros padres it porque esto es justo. Obey your, it says, children, obey your parents because it is what is righteous and just to do. Honra a tu padre y a tu madre porque honor, es el primer mandamiento con promesa. Honor your father and mother because it is the first commandment with a promise. Amen. Para que te vaya bien. So that your life will go well for you. Y seas de larga vida en la tierra. And you will have a long life on the earth. Si tú honras a tu papá y a tu mamá, mother, tus días se alargarán. Si tú no los honras, honor them, si no los respetas, them, tus días se acortarán. Es una promesa. Tú muchacho joven que estás aquí, you, you here, respeta ama a tus papás and love your parents. ya los que estamos más adultos sabemos que papá y mamá se merecen un respeto older, pero ese es nuestro trabajo como hijos honrarlos But as children, that is our responsibility to honor our parents. ese es el único trabajo que tenemos 
Pase tiempo con sus hijos. Parents, spend time with your children. A mí no me gusta mucho las películas de esas de luces, ¿cómo se llama? I don't like Avengers, movies like cosas. Avengers and superhero stuff. Me cuesta entender esas películas. Really, I don't even understand them. It's really hard for me to watch them. Pero yo voy al cine no por mí. But I go to the movies with my kids and it's not for me. Es por ellos. It's for them. Porque ellos les encanta. Because they love it. Y ellos ven que yo estoy haciendo un sacrificio. And they know that I am making a sacrifice to go with them to the movies. Si yo paso tiempo con ellos, ellos van a crecer seguros. Them, y lo más importante, crecerá la confianza. And the most important thing between parents and children is trust. Si no hay confianza en el hogar, If there's no trust in the home, hay un problema muy grande. There is a deep, deep problem. Porque no hay con tu esposa o esposo ni con tus hijos. Because there should be trust between spouses and between children. En la Biblia habla de la generación. The Bible talks about generations. Dice, esto hizo mi papá Jacob con todo. It talks about like my grandfather Jacob did this and Isaac did this and they're they're always referring to their 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 ancestors. La Biblia habla más de 200 veces sobre las generaciones de lo que hicieron y lo pasaron the y lo Bible pasaron. The Bible mentions over 200 times the ancestors of somebody. ¿Qué queremos transmitir a nuestra generación? ¿Quieres transmitir cosas malas? Do you want to bad ¿O them? quieres transmitir amor a Dios? Or do you want to love to God? ¿Quieres transmitir el propósito que el Señor quiere para tus hijos? Do you want to for your ¿Qué quieres para tu generación? Porque tu generación no nada más el que tienes aquí What ahorita. ¿Qué quieres para tu generación? Because your generation is not just those, just you. It's, lo que viene y lo it's que viene. everyone who is coming after you, your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. Because the, your grandchildren one day are going to say, my grandma or my grandpa used to do this or say y this. Esto y lo otro. Otra que quiero mencionar, And so one other thing I just want to share with you. la generación. Hay muchos que dicen, mi abuelo era un borracho. Think about this. There are also a lot of people who say, my grandfather was a drunk. Mi papá es un borracho. My dad is a drunk. Y yo voy a ser And so I'm going to be a drunk no. too. No. Esas cosas hay que cortarlas. We have to cut that stuff off. Porque si no, tu generación va a hablar de que tu familia era una borracha. Because if you don't stop it, then your kids are going to say, well, my dad was a drunk too. Tú no quieres que tu generación sea conocida. Los Beitias, conocido como los borrachos del pueblo. You don't want your family generations. You don't want people to know the crookums or the Beitias as the drunks. Tú no quieres ser conocido por eso. You don't want to be known for that. Padre, y lo vuelvo a repetir, padre y madre, si usted está aquí. Fathers, mothers, let me repeat one more time. Y if si you're here, y usted ve que su familia no está andando como tiene que andar. If you see that your family is not going in the direction it should. Hay algo que anda mal contigo. There's something wrong in you. Las generaciones te está afectando a ti, lo que hicieron tus pasados. Other generations affect you. Corta con malos hábitos. You need to cut off bad habits in your own life. Porque cuando tú tienes hábitos que no son sanos, tus hijos los atraen. Because whenever you have bad habits in your life, your parents, uh, your children are likely to take those on as well. Sana. Perdona. So heal. Forgive. Perdona a tus hijos. Forgive your children. Hijo, perdona a tu padre children, y a tu madre. Forgive your mother and your father. No importa lo que pasó. Doesn't matter what has happened in the Hieren. past. It, the, the hurts that there have been. Duele. There are pains. Pero hay que perdonar como Cristo nos perdona. But we have to forgive like Jesus forgave us. Y pedirle al Señor la sabiduría para que nos ayude a seguir adelante como padres de familia. And we need to ask the Lord to give us wisdom to be able to move forward in these things. El enemigo en este tiempo está tomando ventaja de la familia. The enemy right now and right now is taking advantage of the family. La familia se está destruyendo. There are families being destroyed everywhere. Familias que no les importa sus padres y los dejan morir. Their family, their kids who don't even care about their parents, let them die alone. Padres que solo quieren solo tener la familia ahí. No. And then their parents, their fathers who just want absolute domination over their family. No es bíblico. That's not biblical. 
Deja tu familia crecer en el ambiente cristiano. You have to let your children grow in the Lord and your family grow in the Lord. Pero si tú quieres una familia sana, sana, sana tú primero. If you want a healthy family, heal yourself first. Y pide perdón. And ask for forgiveness. Como el Señor nos ha perdonado a nosotros. Just like the Lord has forgiven us. Yo quiero que el la alabanza. So I'm going to ask the worship team to come up. Ellos van a cantar la canción The Blessing. Yeah, they're going to sing the blessing. Y yo quiero hacer algo muy especial. And I want to do something special this morning. Quizás algunos van a decir, ay, esta Carmi sí le gusta incomodar a la gente. Um, oh. Como le gusta incomodar. Oh, uh, some of you might be thinking, Carmi really likes to make people uncomfortable. <laughs> y póngase de pie, póngase de pie. So everybody stand up, please. Yo quiero en esta tarde que los que tienen sus hijos aquí, los que tienen sus mamás aquí, uh, those of you who have maybe your children in the room or your parents, ajúntense, uh, if you can gather together, ore por ellos, um, pray for each other, bendígalos, bless each other, pídales perdón, and if you need to, ask for forgiveness, no porque yo lo estoy diciendo, not because I'm telling you to, es porque hay libertad cuando tú perdonas a papá y mamá, whenever you forgive your mother and father or whoever you need to, it brings freedom into your life, quienes se acuerdan de la predica que yo di de, del padre, del, del buen pastor, some of you may remember the sermon I did on um, the pastors, good pastors, padre sea un pastor para su casa, father be the pastor of your home, guíe, cuide, Take care of them. Sea un buen them. ejemplo. Be a good example. Pídale al Señor la sabiduría. Ask the Lord for wisdom. Entonces, el, el que no tiene mamá y papá aquí, bueno, que le pida al so Señor. So if you don't, if you don't have someone here that you need to talk to, then just at least talk to the Lord. Y yo voy a orar y después eh, dos te va a cantar la canción, gonna, pero si tienes. Yeah, I'm going to pray and then we're going to let them lead the worship. Pero si tienes algún familiar aquí, no lo pases por alto, anda. If if you have someone here that you need to talk to, if you have family here. Don't let the, the rest of the service just go by. Take Yo sé que los niños no están aquí, pero ore por ellos. I know the kids are not here, but pray for your kids together. Ore por, su por sus esposas, por sus amistades, pray por su salud. Pray for their future spouses. Ore para que el Señor les revele el plan perfecto que tiene pray para esos hijos. Pray that the Lord will reveal His plan into their lives. Porque cada hijo tiene un don y tiene un, un ministerio. Because every child has a gift, has a ministry that God has given Pídele them. Pídele al Señor Jesús que te revele cómo alimentar su Ask the Lord su, su su don. how to guide them into those callings. Vamos a orar. All right, let's pray. Señor, gracias porque tú eres tan bueno, Señor. Lord, thank you because you're so good. Gracias porque tú estás aquí, Padre. Thank you because you are here. Señor, las familias están en tu corazón porque así tú lo creaste, Dios. Lord, the family is in your heart because you created it. Señor, yo te pido por cada papá, cada mamá, cada hijo que hay aquí, Señor. I ask you for every father, mother, and child here. Yo te here. pido por sabiduría, por entendimiento, por guianza. I ask you for wisdom, for understanding, and guidance. Señor, yo sé que el rol de padres no es fácil I know that being a, a father is not easy pero te tenemos a ti Señor que podemos decir Padre ayúdame but Lord you are our example as our father ayúdame a guiarlos help me Lord to guide ayúdame my family ayúdame a que ellos vean Señor a ti let them see you Lord Señor gracias por cada una de las familias aquí reunidas thank you for each family that's here Lord Señor yo pido por sus hijos I ask you for their children Señor oro por su generación Señor Jesús for their generation Lord Señor sabemos que esta generación es tan poco difícil we know that this is a hard generation pero sabemos que contigo todo es posible Señor but we also know that with you yo all bendigo Señor estas familias I bless these families this Señor morning. y si alguno de ellos tiene que reconciliarse con su papá su mamá and if any of them need to reconcile with their parents Tienen Lord. que pedir perdón. If they need to ask for forgiveness. Que ellos den el primer paso y sean libres de eso, Señor. Take the first step and en el nombre free. de Jesús. In Jesus name. Amén. Amén. Lord bless you. And keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Gracious to you, the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Say it again. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious.
message today was parents may you never lose your awe and wonder of God and if you never lose that you will you will raise your kids properly not perfectly properly amen thank you Carmi what a what a great message um, amen so go in peace and maintain your awe of God in your week amen God bless you